Hey guys, and welcome to Code with Chuck. Today I'm going to show you how to make a door blueprint that opens and closes automatically. To get started, first download from the description the models of the door and door frame that I've provided and import those into your project. After that, we're going to create a new blueprint that we're going to call door underscore BP. All right, let's open up the blueprint. And when we first get in, we're gonna do a couple things. First, we're gonna drag in the models that were provided. It's important if you're using your own model to note that the pivot point of the door is on the side of the door, not the middle. All right, we're gonna go and add a box collision. This is gonna be the area where we sense any players that are nearby the door to tell it to open. We're going to scale it up accordingly to the size that fits our game best. All right, now that we got that done, in our event graph, we're going to create a couple variables. The first variable is going to be is moving, and this lets us know if the door is currently moving, and then is open, which tells us if the door is open or closed. We're going to get is moving and create a branch statement, and we're going to use this to tell if it's moving so that we don't start another movement while it's currently moving. If we don't do this, we're going to get a kind of glitchy effect. After this, we're going to put together a couple nodes that are going to allow us to detect any overlapping actors in our box collision. We're going to set it to the third person character since it's the default for the third person package in Unreal. We're going to get the length of the array and we're going to check if this length is greater than zero. This is letting us know if any characters are inside the collision box. We're going to use a branch statement off of that and tie it into the false of the is moving branch. After this, we're going to create another branch statement, which is is open, and we're going to put this off the true side, and we're going to copy it and also put it off the false side. After this, we're going to set is moving to true, because at this point we've decided to start our moving process, and we don't want any other processes to interrupt the current one. Then we're going to create a timeline. A timeline is a node that allows us to change a value over a course of time. We're going to call this one open door and we're going to attach our execution to play from start. We're going to open up the timeline and change the length of the timeline to one second. We're going to add a float track and call it door angle. We're going to right click at the beginning and add a key. We'll set the time to zero and the value to zero. And at the end, we'll add another key, setting the time to one and the value to 90. This is going to create a chart that changes the value from zero to 90 over the course of one second. After this, we're going to make a copy of our timeline and add it below connecting to the play from start again, and we're going to call this one closed door. In this one, we're going to open it up and we're going to reverse our values. The first one will be a value of 90 at a time of zero, and the second one will be a time of one with a value of zero. After this, we're going to take our door mesh and we're going to set the relative rotation of it based on the output of these timelines. We're going to break the rotator node on the set relative rotation and plug our door angle into the Z angle. Repeat this again below. And 
and plug in our mesh. After that, we're going to set is open. On the top one, we're going to set it to true because we had just opened the door. And on the bottom one, we're going to set it to false because we just closed the door. After that, we're going to set is moving on both of them to false because we are done with our moving sequence and we want to allow a new sequence to start. We add our actor into the game. Before we hit play, we should go into the door frame mesh and on the right scroll down and we want to change the collision complexity to use complex collisions as simple. This will allow us to walk through the door rather than the game interpreting the door as one big box. And there you have it, a door that opens and closes. As always, thanks for joining and I can't wait to see you next time.